Hello, I'm Robert Martinez, and I am the State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Now, under the colonial system, it was forbidden for New Mexicans to trade with French people or British people or Americans to the east or other uh, native Indian groups that were not part of the New Mexican system. It was illegal. The borders were closed. Uh, that doesn't mean it didn't happen, uh, but typically they were not supposed to do that. Um, if you want to know what people were doing in any given historical period, study the laws, study the rules that say don't do this, and then you'll know that at least some people were doing that thing. Well, same with New Mexico. But once Mexican independence comes, Mexico allows trade and commerce and interaction with Americans to the east. So right around September of 1821, right on the cusp of Mexican independence, a man in Missouri named William Becknell was just waiting to open up his business here in New Mexico. He was a veteran of the War of 1812, and uh, he uh, essentially helped establish the Santa Fe Trail from Missouri to Santa Fe. He came with about 20 men and carts loaded with American goods to sell to New Mexicans. And this starts a uh, trade east and west, which usually uh, had been north-south on the Chihuahua Trail, the old Camino Real uh, between uh, the towns and uh, Placitas in New Mexico and places like Parral and Chihuahua uh, down south. So this is what's happening across the prairies. It's a very dangerous uh, way to go, though, because there's a lot of native groups along the way that aren't too happy that there are Americans encroaching on their natural territories. But nonetheless, business opens up. Um, one guy in 1831, Jebediah Smith, is a good example of uh, the dangers of this trade. He was killed by Comanche warriors, lanced to death, on his journey to uh, New Mexico. So these things happened. Another guy that comes uh, around 1831 uh, was Josiah Gregg. He's quite fascinating. He's not so much a businessman or uh, a fur trapper. He comes out for health reasons and he becomes an, an observer of New Mexico and the Santa Fe Trail. He writes a, a book called Commerce of the Prairies, and it's quite amazing uh, what he has to say about life in those times and in New Mexico. Like a lot of Americans, because they were the conquerors, they were the uh, ones who came to New Mexico, immigrated here, he tended to have, at least at first, a bit of a superiority attitude, a superior attitude over the New Mexicans. And at first, he looked down on us. But then he started to go a little deeper. He started to look at our customs, our language, uh, the way we lived here. And he ended up having a little bit more positive view of us. So his writings are some of the best. He was a, an author, a, an observer, a historian. And if you want to know what New Mexico was like during this period, it's a good idea to read his writings because this is our Mexican years and a lot of what we learn about New Mexico comes from American observers. Now keep in mind, we need to remember they were biased. They were coming with a bit of a Northern European Anglo-Protestant viewpoint uh, and they brought their prejudices uh, against uh, Catholicism and uh, Spanish Mexican culture. But nonetheless, nonetheless, they are um, really amazing observations. Not unlike what we read when we uh, look at writings from the perspective of Spanish priests and governors about New Mexico in the 1600s and the 1700s. A lot of times they also had a superiority attitude or complex and would write some not very nice things about Pueblo people or about the mixed blood population of New Mexico in the 1700s, uh, the Nuevo Mexicanos, as I call them. Nonetheless, 
uh, these are important observations and writings that come down to us through the centuries. The United States and Mexico actually had a pretty good relationship, at least at first, from about 1821, for about 10 years or so, uh, 15 years, uh, the United States opens a, a government office to monitor commerce, and uh, the New Mexico government in Santa Fe actually is subsidized heavily uh, by American trade. The excise taxes that are imposed help to finance New Mexico government because down south in Mexico City, things are really unstable. Uh, for the 25 years that New Mexico is part of Mexico, the federal government in Mexico City will change hands about 25 times, uh, roughly 25 times. Think about that, how unstable that was. So a lot of attention could not be put in northern areas like New Mexico or Texas or California. But things start to change around 1835, 1836, when a lot of your Texians, these are your Texas immigrants from back east, uh, start to make noise about wanting to secede from Mexico. And this happens in 1836, uh, when we have the Alamo, the battle uh, over Texas, and Mexico wins at first, but then ultimately Texas is victorious and becomes a republic. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that what Texas does in 1836 is claim territory deep into New Mexico and then north into what's now Colorado and Wyoming. They claimed the Tejanos, the Texans, they claimed all of New Mexico east of the Rio Grande. Can you imagine that? Well, they were wrong. It was a boondoggle. It was a, a deception. Uh, Texas flag never flew over New Mexico. Um, you see maps, I see maps of uh, Mexico, the United States, Texas around 1836, 1840, and it shows Texas going all the way uh, to places like Albuquerque and Santa Fe, and it just was uh, never true. It was a, a false claim made by Texas. Let's be very clear about that. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, in 1841, the Texas Santa Fe expedition was an attempt by the Texans to take New Mexico. Uh, they failed miserably. It was ill-planned. Uh, many died on the way. And um, New Mexicans led by Manuel Armijo turned them back on the eastern plains of the Llanos, uh, east of New Mexico. Uh, so they, they never succeeded. But the New Mexicans, the Nuevo Mexicanos, never forgot this. And it'll serve them later on in conflicts uh, with Texans over the decades. But at this time, around 1837, a year later, there are more uh, earthquakes, political earthquakes from the South when a Mexican governor is appointed named Albino Perez. He comes up and he also looks down on the people here, the Pueblo Indians, the, the New Mexicans, and he doesn't like them and they don't like him. He's abusive and arrogant, and furthermore, he brings a new federal tax that he attempts to impose on the New Mexicans. Well, 1837 at Chimayo, there's a revolt, a rebellion, a resistance against this man, Albino Perez, and the Mexican government. So what happens is a group of New Mexicans chase him down, uh, some New Mexicans come up from Santa Fe to help him, and then they turn on him. And ultimately, he and some of his cohorts try to flee south. One of them is Santiago Abreu, the first Abreu in New Mexico, or the son of the first Abreu in New Mexico, that is. Anyway, it's a bad scene. And down near Santo Domingo, some of the folks from that area, they kill Albino Perez. They cut his head off, and somewhere along the lines, we're not sure, maybe near Santo Domingo, maybe just south of Santa Fe, near the Agua Fria district of Santa Fe, they uh, cut his head off, and the story is they 
kicked his head around uh, like a game, like soccer. And uh, uh, his friends, some of his friends are killed in a very gruesome, brutal way. So this is the uh, Chimayo Rebellion, not just against Albino Perez, but against the Mexican government. Um, this is a uh, kind of uh, indicative of how New Mexicans would deal with situations if they were unhappy with outsiders coming in, telling them what to do, or abusing them. Uh, it happened under Spain. Uh, Governor Luis Rosas in the 1640s, New Mexicans rose up against him and killed him uh, right there uh, off of the plaza in Santa Fe. Uh, and so... Uh, up to that point, uh, New Mexicans, Nuevo Mexicanos, had killed a Spanish governor and then a Mexican governor. But we'll see what happens about 10 years later when the Americans come. But that's it for now. New Mexico history in 10 minutes. I will see you next time. Hasta luego. Bye.